Hey everyone and welcome to the video. This week I actually spent some time getting VS Code up and running for Python. Now if you know me, you know that I usually use PyCharm or Sublime and they're like my favorite editors, including Vim2. The last time I tried VS Code for Python, it didn't go too well and I ended up raising a few issues on the GitHub page. Since then, they've made a lot of changes and it's working so far, so let's see how the week goes. Now not long ago, I made a tutorial of taking a music video on YouTube and putting it into your Spotify playlist using Python. Now if you haven't already, do check the video out, I'll link to it above, but in in that video, a few of you mentioned that you want to see a different tutorial. One of you said that you're thinking about building a Discord bot and you want to be able to get the current playing track on Spotify. I tinkered around to see if it was possible and it turns out the Spotify API does offer this. So in this video tutorial today, we're going to walk through the entire process of writing a Python program that gets the current playing song on Spotify. We're also going to up it a notch, so if a user changes what they're listening to, so for example if they skip a song, if they go back, we get updated and our Python program then prints that out. Now please do smash that like button. I'm trying my best to grow this community so I can hopefully teach you programming in a fun and more interesting way. With that said, I just want to give a quick shout out to Jackson and Nick, who's been a long time subscriber of mine. He's continued to leave feedback on my community channel, so thank you, Jackson. Um, hopefully, my content is helping you to learn programming. With that said, buckle your seatbelts and let's get coding. Right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have our classic if name main check and essentially this is just gonna tell Python where to start the program. So uh, we'll create a function called main and then up above here, um, I'll leave it empty for now. The first thing we're gonna have is a variable called current track info. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna call a function or store the results of a function called get current track and get current track is only gonna take one argument and that is gonna be the Spotify access token. And the idea is that this current track info, uh, we're gonna make it a, a JSON or a dictionary. And this get, uh, get current track uh, function is gonna return that dictionary. And so to give you an idea of what that dictionary is gonna look like or what we want it to look like, I'm gonna code this up is ID and this is gonna be the unique ID that comes back from Spotify identifying the song that's currently playing. And then we're gonna have a name for the song. Um, so that's, let's just say the song's called Num. And then the artists, um, because you can have one or more artists for a song, uh, but in this case, Num only has one artist and that's Linkin Park. So the idea again is just that we're gonna have a dictionary um, and the get current track is gonna return that and we're gonna store that in current track info. So let me get rid of this and what we'll do is in this program we're just going to print it out using pprint. pprint stands for pretty print and it's a nicer way of printing out dictionaries and so I quite I use it quite often actually and I'm going to pass in another argument called indent and I'll give it the value 4 and essentially what this is going to do is going to print out the dictionary in a nicely formatted way and we're going to make sure we indent or the keys are indented um, by four uh, spaces. So I'm going to import preprint from above. And that's it. And that looks good, really. Now, uh, maybe in the tutorial, what we'll do is we'll set up a while loop to run this every second. I'll give you a preview of what that looks like. But for now, this is just going to uh, get the current track that's playing uh, as a one-off. Now, this Spotify access token, we're going to define above. Um, usually, you put this in the environment variable. Um, but again, this is just going to be a script that we're running locally. So, uh, you know, security can be a bit loose. And in this case, we're just going to have it at the top of the file. And we're going to get that a bit later on in the tutorial. I'll show you how you can get an access token. So now it's time to implement this uh, method called get current track. And I'm going to create it above here. So def get um, or get current track. And again, this is just going to take one argument called access token. And I'm going to leave it empty for now. Now, the way the get current track is going to work is we're going to issue out a request to the Spotify API. We're going to give it the access token. We're going to get back the data. And then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to process that data because it's, you know, it's as you can imagine, it's in a format that we're going to need to make a bit more friendly for the purposes of this program. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable called response. And that's going to store the result of uh, calling out to the Spotify API. And we're going to use the request library to do that. So I'm going to import request above. Let's do that request above. And then request. And then the type of request that we're going to issue is a get request. 
and this is going to call out to a URL which we'll call uh, Spotify get current track URL and this one we're going to define above and we're going to need to get that from a documentation so we'll get that in a second to pass in the authorization we're going to pass in the headers or value for the headers parameter and this takes a dictionary and it's a number of headers that you can pass in well we're going to pass one which is the authorization and the value of that is going to be equal to, I'm going to set it equal to an F string because it's nice. Um, and then it's going to be bearer space, the access token. And this is where the F string is quite cool because you can just pass in the braces. You pass in the access token and Python will substitute that into the string for you. So that was good, really. That's really the basis of our request. And the next thing uh, that we want to do is we want to pass the response. Right, and so the next thing we want to do, given that it's a JSON response, and it's quite handy, we're going to make use of a function that's provided by the request library. So first of all, we're going to create a variable called JSON. It's shorthand for response JSON. And whenever you make a, uh, or whenever you make an API call using the requests library, so if it's request.get, post, whatever, um, it gives you back a response object. And that's really handy because on that response object, you have a method called Dot JSON, right? So again, I've stored the uh, the result of request.get in this variable called response, and then on that you have a method called dot JSON, which essentially will give you back a JSON uh, response, and it's quite nice because essentially it's a Python dictionary that you can work with, and it just makes it easier to process. Right. So I've switched over the Spotify documentation because I want to show you uh, the method that we're going to use, um, so the endpoint we're going to call. And more importantly, the response that we get back, because we need to understand the structure so that again, we can you know, write the code that's gonna be able to process that response uh, accordingly. And then the next thing we wanna do is we wanna scroll down a bit. Now I've clicked try it, which allows you to be able to you know, execute a request on this web console and see the data that you get back. So you don't actually need to write any code here, it's quite handy. And as you can tell, I've got this response. I've got a song currently playing on Spotify on my phone. And as you can tell, it's got a bit of information about the device. So currently I'm playing a song on my iPhone. And so it tells you a bit more about the device that's playing the song. And then here you can sort of get an idea of like um, the shuffle and the repeat state. So shuffles on. And uh, more importantly, you've got a key called item. And this is essentially where it has all the data about the current playing song. Now, as you can tell within that, you have another dictionary. So as you can tell, there's a lot of nesting going on. Um, but in here you have an album, but we don't really, well, we're not really bothered about that. What we're looking for is essentially an ID. So we've got an ID here that's quite cool. Um, and then we've also got a key artist. So that's gonna be handy because we wanna be able to see all the different artists for a current song. So as you can tell um, for this song, there are a couple of artists. Uh, so that's good to know because we're gonna to need to uh, join, or we're gonna to need to be able to, you know, join all those artists together and put it into a string uh, that we get back. And then that's about it, bar one more thing, of course, which is probably the most important thing, which is the name. Uh, so that's the name of the song. And then what we might do actually is we might also make use of the uh, href or the uh, external URL. Actually, the external URL probably makes more sense because this is a link out to the song so what we'll do is we'll get the current playing song and we'll also print the link out uh, to that song so that we can click it and open it uh, just to look so that's given us a good idea of exactly what the structure of the response looks like let's get back to the code editor where we're going to start passing uh, the response and then build up that dictionary that's going to have all the details about the current playing song Right, so I'm back here and what we're going to do is we're going to start off with uh, the kind of dictionary that we want to return. So we're going to call this current track info. And then this is going to be a dictionary and that's going to have the ID and the idea is that's going to um, uh, correspond to the track ID. We're also going to have the name of the track. So I'll put name here and that's going to be track name. Uh, and then the next thing that we're going to have here is the artist so again as i mentioned you're going to have multiple artists right so we're going to need to be able to return back let's let's return back the name of the artist i think that makes sense uh, for this program i think that's good enough and then the last thing is the link and again this is going to correspond to the link uh, that um, spotify use uh, to uh, point to the song 
Cool, so this gives you an idea of what we want. So now let, we're gonna have to actually do some processing here uh, so we can get all of these uh, lovely variables. Right, so some of these are quite easy to get hold of. So the track ID again, we saw um, earlier on that it's in the response. So I'm gonna copy that here, response JSON, and it's under item followed by ID. So, you know, that's quite straightforward. Um, track name is quite similar um, to in that it's under item name. Right, so getting artists is actually a bit tricky and this is because um, a song can have more than one artist, right? So if we head back to the Spotify docs, as you can tell, artists here is actually an array and it's an array of objects and in each object you have uh, the artist. So it tells you type artist and then you have the name of the artist and you have the ID and then you also have a link, a Spotify link directly to the artist. So that's quite cool. So heading back to the code editor, what we want to do is we want to get the name for each one of the artists. And I think a nice way, so here we've got artist name, actually that should be called artist name. Um, essentially this should be something like, um, I think it'll be nice if it's something like, you know, Linkin Park and then Jay-Z. So it's essentially a comma separated uh, string. Um, and what that's going to do is if a song has multiple artists, you know, you, it's comma separated. And so I think that'll be quite nice because again, when we print it out, we can clearly uh, see that uh, that given song has uh, more than one artist. So to actually make this happen, let's get rid of this. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have a variable called artists. And this is gonna be, uh, it's gonna be the response JSON the item artists. And again, uh, switching back to the Spotify documentation, as you can tell here, it's an array. And so this is gonna be a array of artist objects. And then for each artist object, what we want to do is we want to store it into uh, in a string, right? And so the way you do that, and it's quite handy in Python, you have a nice way. Um, so I'm going to call this artist name. I'm going to get that from down below here, artist name. And then we're going to make use of the join function. So the join function, the way it works is you give it a character. So here I'm given a comma followed by space. And then you call dot join on the string and then you give it an array. So I'm gonna give it artists. Uh, I'm gonna give it artist, gonna a, a list comprehension. And that's gonna be artist name for artist in artists, right? So it's a bit of a mouthful there. Um, and that might not be the easiest thing to see. So I'll put that on a separate line. Um, so let's go through this. So join takes an array, um, and in this case, we're passing it an array of artist names. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna join each one of those uh, with this string, which is comma and a space. And it's quite cool because it also handles the case where the last artist isn't gonna have this leading uh, comma and space at the end. So that's quite handy. It's a, uh, it's a common function used in Python when you have a list of things that you wanna print out in um, a comma separated and so join is quite handy for that and the reason why we're doing the list comprehension here uh, in all fairness what I could do is I could make a variable above put artist name but I think this is quite clear I mean well it's easy to see what's going on and I think it works well for this program so again artists um, actually this should be called artist names and then I'm going to copy that down below here and I think that looks good Right, and so the last one is going to be link, and link is going to be a link to the song, uh, the Spotify link to the song. And again, we can find that in JSON uh, or response JSON. And then in that you have item, and remember it was in external URLs, and that had a key Spotify, I believe. We can double check that anyway, so let me just copy that. And if I double check that here, um, it's in artists, but here, yeah, as you can tell, so you've got external URLs here, and then in that you have Spotify, uh, the key, and then you've got the link to the song. So that looks good. So that's the link really. And then we can get rid of that extra line. And I think we're good. Right, so the last thing we need to do before we can get this program running actually is to get the access token. And again, we've left it empty here. So if you head to um, the link that I'll put in the description below, if you are choosing to code with me today, um, go to that link and then you'll be on the console and you'll be in this method here. And here you have an option to get token. Um, by the way, if you're unfamiliar with the Spotify API, getting started, authorization, you know, all those different things, I did make a video explaining all of that. Um, so feel free to check that out. I'll put a link to uh, that video above. 
But um, if you click the link in the video description, you'll end up here. And here you see the section OAuth token. And if I click get token, um, required scopes for this endpoint. So just make sure you tap that, which is the scope needed to be able to get the current playing song for the user. And then you click request token, that will refresh and this field will now be populated with a token. So if I copy that and then what I'll do is I'll paste that in the Spotify access token variable up above. And now we can give this program a run. Right, so what I will do is I'll get that open and then I'll open Spotify on the right hand side. And as you can tell here, I'm playing it on my iPhone actually. Probably could play it on here, but yeah, it will still work. So in any case, um, I've got this uh, song playing and um, yeah, as you can tell, it's playing. It's on 240 at the moment. And then on the left hand side, I've got the program. So let's give this a run. So if I uh, type python main.py and I tap enter, and as you can tell, it's uh, printed out. So here we've got to the artist, Thomas Bergerson, Two Steps From Hell. We've got the ID, we've got the link, and then we've got the name. And maybe if I, let's switch to another song. So um, I Wish by Stevie Wonder. Python main.py, we execute it again. Here you can see it's updated. So it does get the latest song that's playing. And here in this case, it just has one artist and the link to the song and the name. And I can click that link and it will open that up in uh, the web browser. Um, it's a bit slow so far, isn't it? But in any case, I can go back. Let's go back and let's, uh, let's give this one more run. And then as you can tell here, again, it will keep updating with the latest song that's playing. So that's quite handy. Now I said I might show you how to put this all in the while loop. So let's actually do that. So what I'll do is I'll put this in a while loop. So we'll do while true, uh, get the current track, we print it out. And so we'll put that all in the while loop. And then let, let's get this to run every two seconds. So, you know, let's not go too crazy, but I think running every two seconds, uh, that would be quite nice. And then what I'll do, um, again, we're using the time library for that. There's a function called sleep. That takes a number of seconds that you essentially want to pause and not do anything. Um, so again, two seconds is fine. And then I'll need to import the time library. So we'll do that here. And let's head back to the terminal. And again, we'll have Spotify open on this side. So as you can tell, we're playing this song here. Let me switch it to another song. And so what we do now, if we run the program, tap enter, as you can tell, it's gonna execute this every two seconds. And so right now on the left hand side, you've got, you know, the, the song that's currently playing. And as I switch, hopefully this will get the latest song. And as you can tell, it's updated, right? And let me switch to another one. And you can see it's getting the latest song. So yeah, it works. That's pretty cool, right? Right, that's the end of the video. And I'm sure you learned an incredible amount of how to reach out to the Spotify API, get the current playing track and have an update if the user changes what they're listening to. If you did enjoy the video and you're learning Python, then do consider subscribing because I'm gonna to continue to make more fun Python project tutorials like this. Until then, have a lovely weekend and I'll see you next time. Peace.